Murray Costello, involved in international hockey for over 30 years. He wasn't initially sure, many years ago, that life with the then Canadian Amateur Hockey Association would be for him. It was interesting, and I didn't ever think it would work out when, I, when they first asked me to interview for it. But because I had a background in the game and had done some work in it at the professional level, I wasn't all that interested in working for volunteers because I'd heard stories of being disorganized and not very effective in what they were doing. And yet I saw that uh, some help was needed. And the international side, I must admit, was, was attractive to see just how things operated in Europe and where Canada fit in in the whole thing. Costello spent just over three seasons and 162 games in the old 16 National Hockey League. Playing games in Maple Leaf Gardens and in the Montreal Forum against guys like Beliveau and the Rocket and playing with and against uh, Gordie Howe, I, I always thought was just a privileged time in, in a kid's career. And to travel and see the way people reacted and responded to the game was wonderful. Uh, it's not something you want to stay with that long, but while it was there, it was an experience that I would never trade. It, 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 it was wonderful. Oh, this one, this is an old one. Somebody gave me a, an action shot was Jacques Plant in goal, and that's Bud McPherson, a big guy who's bigger than I was, and behind him was Don McKinney, and then Doug Harvey, one of the really true gates of the game. And I think behind him was Bellabo, and had a shot on goal, but I didn't beat Plant, as you see him <laughs> flipping away the rebound. <laughs> there, it is. there it is, the rebound, bouncing <laughs> away. Despite some success, Costello didn't see an NHL career fitting in with his life plan. I don't think I ever bought into the old way of player thinking. Uh, that was part of the, uh, the reason that the NHL didn't have the appeal for me that it had to most. I, I think I had the uh, skill level to play at that level, but I didn't find it very interesting. They traveled so much, there was so much downtime, and game to game to game, they, they hammered the daylights out of each other, and I thought, you know, is, is this really worth it? Is this something that's a worthy career that way? There must be a better way. Costello's early days around the International Ice Hockey Federation sometimes proved challenging. For a start, he had to learn the politics of international sport. The president had the hammer and he used it effectively to get done what he wanted done. It was Dr. Gunther Savetsky. And we had a few clashes early because he wouldn't listen to any kind of democratic process uh, with the simultaneous translation. He would rush things through and by the time he got to comment, it was long past and he said he couldn't go back to it. So we had a few clashes on that. Looking back and looking ahead, Costello would like to see a future where the game is played in such a manner that smaller, skilled players have room to excel. We have to get back to that, to allow for that to happen in our game and not just let size and intimidation rule. And that's true everywhere. Uh, when it's done right, it's a wonderful game. And I think we have many examples of that, both at the junior level, at top competition, certainly at the Olympic level. Uh, no fighting, no, no, uh, uh, you know, no harassing, no... The stick falls nearly to the extent, and yet the people love what they see in that when it's done right. Murray Costello, a light in hockey. And the game has been a wonderful game in our family. I've had three brothers that uh, we've all done well by the game. We grew up in a gold mining community and would have been miners had it not been the fact that the game got us uh, some scholarship pursuits and allowed us to, to get a start in life. And I've often said that uh, I guess I'm one of those few uh, very uh, lucky people who have been, been able to take a childhood passion for a game turn it into a lifelong pursuit with reasonable income, and then when it's over, be rewarded for having done so. It, it doesn't really make sense to me because it's only a game, but it's been fun.